for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us To my man Sammy got it off the ground And to all the listeners tuned in right now Got debates, analysis, and speculation This is sports talk for the new generation You know where to find us, got a reputation Sick podcast, your number one sports destination Giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us Listen to the Sick Podcast with Tony Maradero. 55 seconds left in the penalty, a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time. Boston 4, Montreal 3. 
Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into the mayor back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> there is a ball. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est la bonne chose. Et c'est la bonne chose. Ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. Stanley pour les Canadiens. Le 23e de l'histoire. You found the dogs. John, you found the dogs. He found the dogs. And all together, they worked the young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination. It's going to be sick. Matt O'Han with you on the sick podcast on this very fine, but very, very chilly Friday evening. That's right. Tony's got the day off. It's his weekend. That means I fill in. Welcome, everyone. Let's take care of some business before we talk about today's game. The sick podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Energy Transportation Group has been recently named by Deloitte and CIBC as one of Canada's best managed companies, the leading the country's leading business award recognizing innovative and world-class companies. The best managed Canadian companies designation fuels energy's purpose of creating progress for our customers, our employees, and our communities. Join a winning team and check out Energy's career page for available opportunities we're also brought to you by playground experience the world-renowned poker experience with free food and drinks at their cash games tables a bad beat jackpot that's already over seven hundred thousand dollars after the world record setting amount of two million five hundred and ninety thousand dollars was won on august 2nd weekly promotions daily tournaments, and unmatched customer service. Why go anywhere else? Located just over the Mercier Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal. Playground. And of course, by La Bita TB Beer, brewed in Quebec and a winner of a dozen international awards, La Bita TB offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bita TB, embrace your true nature all right so this has been a great two days if you're a general sports fan because yesterday of course is american thanksgiving uh so happy thanksgiving to all of our american uh viewers and listeners um and uh obviously we have the three football games the uh nhl took the took the day off they also took the day off on tuesday which was a little weird but anyways um so we had america thanksgiving yesterday so great slate of football games even though they were all kind of blowouts um and today we had hockey all day starting at noon till right now a puck just dropped in uh vancouver against seattle so it's a crazy day if you're a if you're a sports fan. We also had Jets and uh, the Jets and the Dolphins, where the Dolphins took care of business there, as expected. So uh, the Canadians were also in action. A very rare midweek afternoon game because it's uh, Black Friday in the states. So let's talk about it because they were playing in San Jose on the West Coast, and uh, he watched the game from afar. But his ana- his an- analysis is always well uh, is always well and appreciated. Mr. Stu Cowan of the Montreal Gazette. Stu, how are we doing? I'm doing well. Actually, I wasn't in a bar. I was in my living room watching the game, but uh, it didn't look good for the Habs there for a while when they were down 2 nothing. And you're thinking, maybe they're not only going to lose to the worst team in the NHL, they might get shut out, something that hasn't happened mm. to them all season. But with this team, ever since Marty St. Louis took over, one of the things that's been so impressive is the fact that they never give up. And they didn't give up mm-hmm. again uh, this afternoon and came back and won 3-2 on a beautiful shootout goal by a Jesse Olinen. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because we're going to get into the uh we're going to get into the game into more specifics a little bit uh a little bit later, but what I wanted to mention is it's like it's it's kind of amazing to me to watch this team and like I Stu, you've been watching this game for a, a long time mm-hmm. and you've watched your fair share of football. You watch your fair share of sports. Mm-hmm. You could tell, you know, half about halfway through a game Hockey, football, whatever. Pretty much if a team is going to win this game. Like, you could kind of see where this game is going. 
for the most part, you know, there's, there's tight contests all the time, but for the most part, when it, you, you just know, and like the Canadians, it's like today was one of those games where it's like, they dominated the first period, but then they fell behind two nothing. And I'm just like, it's not their day. No, nope. and, and, uh, and pretty well, behold, it's, that's it. The end of the first period after Matheson took that penalty, the shots, I think were nine, four for the Canadians. And then, the end period ended 11 9 the shots uh, for San Jose. Um, Primo kept them in them in the game then. And then, you know, as you said, down 2 0, and just nothing's working. Uh, and you just figure that it's not their day and they're going to lose. I, I thought they might get shut out. But uh, mm-hmm. as I said, they battled back once again. And when Hoffman scored, you know, <laughs> fifth goal in five games, former Canadian. It's also his birthday today. I figured, oh boy, this is what she's going to get like two or three goals. And this is really going to be a. Uh, an embarrassing afternoon for the Canadians, but it turned out not so bad. They picked up the two points. Yep, they picked up the two points, a much needed two points because you know they they just won in Anaheim. But listen, they're not exactly playing against the cream of the crop here uh, in the Anaheim Ducks and mm-hmm. the uh, Jose Sharks. However, this trip year after year just gives them problems beyond belief. So it's got to feel good for them, especially like, I don't, I don't remember because I hadn't seen the stat be thrown around too much before the game. So did they win last year and break that streak of since like 1995? Or yeah, was I believe they did. They, well, they went right through the 2010s. I think it was without ever winning in San Jose. I remember going yeah. covering a game in San Jose a couple of years ago and looking through the game notes and I hadn't realized it. They hadn't won a game I, it was like uh, Craig Rive or, some, or somebody scored the winning goal the last time they had won in San Jose. Um, but yeah, that's two wins out of the first two of the first three games in California. You know, they, there's all that talk all the time about you know how important it is to be in a playoff spot or at least close to a playoff spot on U.S. Thanksgiving. So here we are, U.S. Thanksgiving weekend, and the Canadians are two points out of uh, eighth spot in the Eastern Conference. So, uh, I mean, I don't think they're going to be a playoff team. I haven't thought they would since the start of the season, but um, they're, you know, they're, they're hanging in there a quarter of the way through the season. Well, you know, that's it. They're, they're hanging in there, like you said. And I don't think um, a lot of people, you know, we, we, we spoke, uh, we did like a preseason show, mm-hmm. uh, you and I, and we, we both said like, listen, uh, we're not going to predict the Canadians are going to make the playoffs. However, you know, crazier things have happened mm-hmm. but i just think with the way this season is unfolding like it's when when you say that crazier things have happened like a lot of things need to go right for the canadians to make the playoffs with the state that they're in and like it's just not going right for them like they're the it's just they're the the undisciplined play just is a common theme that just keeps coming up. It's gotten maybe a little bit better, but it's ebbs and flows now. The, cra- uh, the craziest the thing, tending. the craziest thing is the injuries. The injuries that just keep coming. Oh. I mean, they well, it's the one constant. It's Arvid the, it's Jack the one is constant. Now on injured reserve with his uh, upper body injury. There's another guy gone. It's 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 incredible. It's just three years in a row, and you know Graham Reinben, the longtime athlete, head athletic therapist who got fired in the off season. Must be sitting at home now and going. See, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> it <just keeps laughs> happened. It just gets incredible. It just keeps happening. Now you got Jack guys gone. You got David Savard still out. You got Kirby Doc gone for the season. Uh, you got Jordan Harris is out. Uh, Harvey Penard's out. It's it's a repeat of the last two seasons all over again. Yeah, it's crazy. You see this a lot, like in football. There's usually a couple teams every year where it's like they're a good team but they just get cluster injuries and they just fall apart. But I mean, Hey, listen, with the, with the stage that the Canadians are at in this rebuild, like obviously you never want to see anyone get hurt, but these injuries are kind of allowing the upper management and Martin St. Louis and his coaching staff to really evaluate what they have in the pipeline at an NHL level. I think that's like a positive way of looking at it. Yeah. And Jaden Struble looked really good. This afternoon, I mean, he looked he looked mm-hmm. good the game in uh, in Anaheim, and then today he had like 13 minutes of ice time. He picked up an assist, and he he just he looks really confident with the puck. Like he's making long passes and stretch passes, and he's pinching in and he's uh, playing physical. I, I thought, I mean, they played him limited ice time, obviously those first two games, but he, he hasn't looked out of place at all. He's looked he's looked very good, uh, and uh, as I said, and confident, which is a key for a young defense and trying to put break into the NHL. He's not playing afraid to make, you know, just chipping it off the glass or playing, making the safe play all the time. He's making some really nice offensive plays. He had a nice pass across the Kovacevic. 
Uh, he's Kovacevic's got three goals in four games now, which is crazy. Yes. Uh, hell, of, hell of a goal, too, of a bar down shot. Uh, but you're right. I mean, it's giving uh, some of these younger guys uh, a chance. Uh, Jaden Struble probably wouldn't have seen time in the NHL this season if it wasn't for these injuries. Uh, he's had a bit of a rough road, his injuries and whatnot in university after the Canadians drafted him in the second round, 2019, the same year they took Cole Caulfield in the first round. Um, but, I mean, the biggest injury is obviously the Kirby Doc one, as we've discussed before. That mm-hmm. just sort of limits the uh, the options that Marty St. Louis has with his forward lines. But for, for the injuries they've had, and David Savard, a huge loss also, veteran defenseman, but for the injuries they've had, and you know, not getting I mean, still no goals for Josh Anderson, which is mind boggling. Um, you know, Cole Caulfield finally scored again today. That was his first goal in seven games, only his second at five on five. But you factor all those things in, and it's actually quite surprising they are where they are in the standings. Yeah, you would th- you would think if I t- if it's like I remember last week we were going through all the players, and it's like Josh Anderson. I mean, it's the same story now. Hasn't mm-hmm. scored all season. Cole Caulfield hasn't scored a. Five on five goals since like game two of the season or something like that. And then it would just, the list just kept on going and going and going. And I'm like, God damn, who's scoring goals for the Canadians? Yeah, exactly. Well, look who it is. It's Jonathan Kovacevic who's scoring goals for the Canadians. And then you got I the mean, three goalie yeah. system, the three goalie system, which isn't good for anybody. I mean, it's not good for any of the goalies. It's tough on the goalie coach. It's not a situation Marty St. Louis would like to be in, uh, but mm. they are. And eventually they're going to trade one of the goalies. Um, you know, Ken Hughes doesn't want to give anyone up for nothing. That's why I won't put Primo on waivers. But there's a lot of things. And Primo played well. I said Primo played really well again today. That was a good game. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's been a lot of reports that the Oilers have been scouting the Canadians and looking for goaltending. I don't know if Primo's the guy they'd want. You'd think they'd have maybe more interest in Montembeau or even uh, Jake Allen. But uh, Caden Primo showed today, you know, he, he played a really good game. You know, he, he played, they would, that first period, he kept him in the game. Yeah, uh, the, the the three goalie system has to be tough as well because, like, you know, it's it's almost like you want to have the same luxury that you had last year, which was you were carrying so many so many young guys, and like it was just like oh, okay, you had a bad game, just go sit up in the press box, just watch it from a different angle, and like maybe you want to have that with the forwards, but you don't really have that option when you're carrying three goalies. Uh, you know, just give someone a rest, you know, like take a break, maybe cut someone's ice time by a little bit just to, you know, just watch the game a little bit differently. You can't do it with uh, with three goalies. And I, I mean, I'm really interested to know, like, I want to be in Kent Hughes's mind because like on the surface, the easiest answer to this question is just trade Jake Allen. It's the easiest one. He's the oldest one. He's not going to be a part of the team very much longer, but then you uh, then you when you really dive into it it's he's a leader in that locker room they mm-hmm. they need a leader uh, like a veteran presence like him in that locker room and then you know it's Samuel Montebo do you want to give up on him you just you know he's really been a good soldier for you the past 2 years and like now Caden Primo maybe you have something there i i'm i'm fascinated by the idea of these talks that Kent Hughes and his team are having. Well, two of the big things that Kent Hughes is, number one, he's patient, which is a really good thing to be when you're a general manager, especially when you're rebuilding. And secondly, he's all about asset management. And he's, you know, he, he won't put Primo on waivers because he's afraid he's going to lose him for nothing. And he's holding out to get whatever the best trade he can make for either one of these three goalies. I'm sure they're all, they're all available. He's like, Make me your best offer for one of them. Mm. And whatever the best offer comes, that's who he's going to trade. And the thing with the three goalies, you get Boston and the success they've had with their goalie tandem where they just basically they rotate the goalies. They, they play, mm. you play, then you play, then you play. That's they just that's the way they roll. And the Canadians don't have a real number one goalie. And once they do get down the two goalies, that's the way I would go. I would just rotate the two of them. And whether if, if you lose Allen, then you rotate Montembeau and Primo, and you see you guys are – battling it out, see who, who might be the number one goalie in the future. Or maybe there isn't a number one goalie in the future. Maybe there's a two 1A goalies and you just rotate them. Or would, or if it's Jake, or if you lose Primo, then it's Jake Allen and it's uh, it's Montembeau. But it, the days of the NHL, I mean, the Boston Bruins are the best team in the NHL. They were last year, they are again this year, and they do it with rotating the goalies. So you don't need that number one goalie necessarily now that plays 70 games or 65 games or whatever the numbers were Carey Price used to play and Martin Berger. Mm. You need two 
goalies you can count on who give your team a chance to win every night, and then you can just rotate them. And the Canadians, I think, eventually will be in that situation once they – once. I, I don't think Ken Hughes will let it drag on too, too much longer. Um, but it really is interesting. I'd love to, to – uh, eavesdrop on the phone calls he's having like with the Oilers GM and other GMs who might be poking around to see if they might be able to get one of the Canadians goalies. And, and I'm really, you know, you wonder, cause you know, from a fan's perspective, you're kind of thinking like, you know, oh, the Oilers must be so desperate. You could bring them out for a, for a goalie. And it's like, well, they also just – speaking of the Oilers, they they did win 5 nothing today. Yeah, they had a so, shutout today. Uh, they did yeah. – Stuart Skinner did make a 20 yeah. – did have a 25-save shutout. Um, but, you know, you're, you're kind of thinking, like, how much of it does it get – how much does it get to a point where you're kind of – the fans are kind of bang on where they're like, Edmonton must be so desperate yeah. for a move because it's getting to a point where it's like you're running out of – you're running out of games, you know, sooner or later, it's going to be Christmas break and you're, you know, you could, yeah. you're, what are you going to have? Only 10 wins. Like you're, you're really in tough when that and happens. The other players must be desperate because I don't care what level of sports you've played at, whether you played uh professional, whether you played uh Bantam B or whatever you played when your goalie lets in soft goals, it's so deflating in any sport that you go, Oh my God, stop the puck or slap the ball. Right. It's you get yeah. down and then it happens again. And you're like, Oh, we're never going to win with this guy in net. And it gets into players' heads, and I think that's what's happened with Edmonton. You see how horrible they've been in their own end and just sloppy. It's like they've almost sort of given up. Like It doesn't matter if we play good defense. This guy's going to let in four goals anyway. Mm. And they just seem to really be down. I mean, you look at that bench, uh, and I know before they fired their coach, uh, I think when I was on with you, I said it reminded me of the Canadians' bench before they fired Dominic Ducharme where the players just are like, yeah. help us. You know, this We can't keep going like this. Uh, you know, they got the shutout win tonight, so we'll see if, you know, it might make them not in as much of a rush, but they got to do something. I mean, the goaltending situation, they have two of the best players, or if not the two best players in the NHL on their team. And, uh, you know, they were talking about where you are at Thanksgiving, and, like, they're way out of a – they're seventh place in their division right now. They're way out of the playoffs. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what they do and how that might uh, – what they might do with the Canadians also. I mean, the Oilers with their 6-12-1. Uh, 13 points. They're, they're way like they're, they're it's almost it's, it's gonna be almost impossible for them to get in the playoffs at this point. They, like they need to go it, on a like a 10 and 10 and 0 run or something. It's they're gonna have to pull like what uh St. Louis did uh, a couple mm-hmm. of years ago when they yeah. won the cup. Like they went from yeah. last to worst yeah. to first. It's no joke doing that. I mean, I remember also who did that. Um, was it did the Ottawa Senators almost do that one year? Yeah, well, well when it? the Blues did it, they got a real spark as soon as they made the coaching change. Yeah, that's they right. Made a Ruby took change, over. And it hasn't. I mean, I think they're three and three now since the coaching change was made. And that's after I think they won the last two games. So it's not they. Yeah. It hasn't provided the same spark as it did in St. Louis. And Jake Allen was part of that team. And I know him telling me that uh, it was just it was just they just decided within the room it was just. We're going to start winning. And the Oilers don't yeah. look like they're anywhere near that point right now. Well, that's it. You know, you look at the Oilers and it's just when they fired Jay Woodcroft, like what, I forget which game they lost. And like there was that shot of him when his assistant coach, they're walking and he says, I think that might be it. Like that we're cooked. Yeah. And then they beat Seattle and then they got fired after a loss, uh, after a win. I mean, so it just like they, their their demeanors are all the same. Like you could tell when Dominic Ducharme got fired and Martin St. Louis took over, like I'm not going to say, you know, like the, the players were, they turned it around a 180 and uh, all of a sudden they're world beaters here, but they, they looked like the bags under their eyes kind of disappeared. The smiles started to come back. They felt more at ease, you know, less tension in the shoulders. You don't see that in Edmonton because they still feel the pressure to win and they're just not getting it. Well, and the body language from Connor McDavid and Drysettle has been horrible on the bench. I mean, there's sort of, you know, and, and you look at what's happened in Edmonton too. I mean, you know, they went out and they hired McDavid's former agent to basically be the CEO of hockey operations. They went out and signed his former junior line mate, Connor Brown, to a mm-hmm. contract. He's got zero points in 13 games. Then they fired their coach and hired Connor McDavid's old junior coach to coach the team. 
And like now, maybe they should go find whoever the goalie was, his junior goalie, his last year in uh, in Erie. I think he's playing in Germany or somewhere now, and maybe sign him. It's like it's you know it's it's it seems to be like almost Connor McDavid is running the team, uh, and it's not working. It, it's just it's 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 getting ugly there. And uh, imagine fans in Edmonton, you go into the season. I mean, a team that's had so many number one overall picks, so many high draft picks over the years, and this was the year everything. You know, they look, they were the favorites by a lot of people who win the Stanley Cup, and now it looks like they're not even going to get in the playoffs. Well, that's it, you know. And all, just all that to say, they really need a goaltender bad there or just something because it's, mm-hmm. it's, it, they need something, whatever it is, yeah. upper management, Ken Holland needs to do something to just inject a little bit of life yeah. into that locker room because whether it's a goalie or not, you know, like uh, Primo, Allen, Montembeau, whoever the answer may be, if it's going to be from the Canadians, uh, you know, you need something because that is just one hell of a mess. And uh, wow. frankly, I feel like if you ask a lot of Edmonton players, like, you know, block their names, anonymous response, take a poll. Where would you rather be Montreal or Edmonton? I feel like a lot of them would say Montreal. Well, if they are looking at the Canadians goaltending, it looks like they're, I mean, Primo, I don't think is mentally ready to be put in that situation. No, I mean, he's, no, he's no. looked mentally fragile with the Canadians the last couple of seasons. He's looked like a deer in the headlights often when he gets, mm. gets in the game, he's looked a little better this season, but like that, that, you know, in Edmonton right now, you're going into a, a fire pit. If you're thrown in there as a goalie. That's why, yeah. You know, Jake Allen as a veteran would probably be able to handle it. Well, would be able to handle it much better, I think. And the thing, one of the things I like most about Montembeau is like nothing seems to bother him. Like nothing phases him. He's one of the most, you know, you talk about how cool and relaxed Carey Price was. I think Montembeau was even more so. Like he's sort of, you know, he let in that brutal game, a goal during the preseason, the one that went in off the sideboards and went in. And yeah. we asked him about him after the game and he jokes, well, I guess I'll have to turn off my phone for a couple of days. And he sort of laughed and like nothing, he just seems to be so steady and easy going. And I asked some of the players about it and they said, he's just a real quiet guy who shows up. He doesn't really say a lot, but he's just calm, cool and collected. And you need that to play goalie in Montreal. And you sure as hell need that right now. If you're going into Edmonton, we can put into that situation. Well, that's it. You're kind of in a no-win situation. If you go to that, if you're the goalie, let's just say it's Montembeau or Jake Allen, mm-hmm. if you go to Edmonton, because if you start winning games, the odds are still pretty much stacked against you. You got like you said, you gotta go on a crazy run to string yeah. some get string together some wins and make up some ground. And if you don't do that, it's kind of like you're expected, whoever they get, yeah, you're expected to win day one. Like if you don't if you don't win day one, or oh, is it good? Is the temperature well, going to rise in that dressing room? The, the good thing, I guess, though, from a, the goalie standpoint, whoever would end up there, is that you don't need to be amazing in that. Like mm. this team scores goals, they just need a goalie who stops the shots you're supposed to stop. You know, yeah. they don't need they don't need like Carey Price carrying the Canadians to the Stanley Cup final in 2021 type of goal thing. They just need a guy who's going to. You know, make the saves that he needs Do to make, and not let in more than three goals in a game because the odds are the Oilers are going to probably score four. They just need yeah. they need someone to give their their other players a little bit of confidence that you know you don't need to score seven goals to win. You know, you only need to score three or maybe. Well, four. That, you know, just uh, just finishing up on the Oilers before we get back to the Canadians, it's just it's just a weird season for them because like even Connor McDavid looks off. You know, like yeah. there's still rumblings of him being still injured, that lingering energy mm-hmm. injury. They probably brought it. Maybe they brought him back too early uh, for the Heritage Classic. Like, I don't know. Like that team is I would hate to be a fan of that team because it's like, yeah, sure. On the surface, you got the two best players in the world. But after that, it's like. All right, you got the two best players in the world. Can you we can we start winning some things other than the draft lottery once in a while? Like that would be great. Yeah, and McDavid's also dealing with what I mentioned earlier. People, it looks from the outside looking in like he's running the team, and you wonder yeah, if some of the yeah. players are wondering that too. Like, who are they going to bring in his brother now? Or I don't know if he has has a, has a brother to be yeah. uh, the assistant. Like it's just like it's the Connor McDavid club with his said his old agent, his old coach, his own line mate. They're just bringing surrounding him with everybody that he knows to try and help them. And, and that's got to be weighing on him a bit too. Uh, he's, he said, you know, that he has nothing to do with this and it's just the way they decided mm-hmm. to go. And part of it is Edmonton wanting to keep him there. So he won't leave, I'm sure. 
but that's got to be weighing on him also. And you got to wonder if some of the players in the team are wondering, like, who's calling the shots here? Is it, you know, is it Connor or is it management? Like, who's in charge here? Yeah, I forget where it was, uh, which team, if it was Cleveland or Los Angeles, but it's like exactly <laughs> like what Le- like what LeBron James. No, LeBron's a GM yeah, of every team. team he plays for, yeah. Exactly. And like they bring, they bring in whatever freaking coach he, he wants. Yeah. Uh, they're coming in and mm-hmm. it's just, that's what's happening there in Edmonton. Uh, Cause they want to keep him. They know he's like, yeah. a, in terms of NHL uh, money, at least uh, he is, he's brings in gold for Edmonton. Yeah. Uh, so interesting to see what they do uh, with that goalie situation, but like, let's, let, let's throw some more flowers at the Canadians. I know. And like, we're go- I'm going to make a big point about the Canadians that a lot of people listening to this podcast won't like later, but uh, let's uh, let's, let's uh, grease them up a little bit first. Uh, so, um, I, I again, just going back to the point of these injuries causing opportunity and see for management to see what they have, but also players to take that opportunity and run with it. We mentioned him before, like Jesse alone, and this guy is he's got a. This guy is like exactly what how we were talking about Harvey Pinard last year, but this guy has has considered, and this is no slight on Harvey Pinard, no. but this guy is clearly considerable more offensive talent than he does. Oh, without a doubt. I mean that the you know the shootout goal this afternoon, and then the breakaway goal he had a couple of games ago too, and that's high high end talent we're seeing right there, right? It's, uh, um, I mean, again, you know. I can't believe that when they called up Yol Armia and they played him six games, Yolanen was a healthy scratch for five of those six games. Like, why are you, why are you sitting out Jesse Yolanen, a second round draft pick who's 24 years old with a few, you know, could be a big part of your rebuild here to play Yol Armia, who they called up again today from Laval. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, Yolanen's a second round pick and Harvey Pernard's a seventh round pick. So there's obviously Yolanen's got. A, a better skill package. Um, and, and I think he just needs a more of a chance. I mean, I think they need a, I'd use him more on the power play. I mean, I, I'd use mm-hmm. him with some better line mates. I'd play him more. Uh, he didn't play much at all in the third period this afternoon. I don't even know if we got on the ice at all. And then they put him in for the shootout and he puts a, makes a move like that to win the game. So he's a guy, I think they just need to give him more opportunity and more minutes to show what he can do and gain some more confidence. And, I was really surprised when I heard this afternoon they were calling Yol Army up again. Like, I don't – like, I think we know what Yol Army is all mm-hmm. about, and playing him is just taking away ice time from a younger prospect who uh, – you know, I'd rather see Jonathan Waugh get called up and, mm-hmm. and give him a taste of the NHL rather than a guy that you know who he is and what you're going to get, and he'll look great for one game and then disappear for five or ten games. But um, – so I'll be interested to see what happens tomorrow. I know – uh, Monahan missed practice yesterday uh, for a therapy day. Um, so you wonder if there's some kind of an injury he's dealing with there and maybe he won't be able to play back-to-back games and that's why Ar- Army was called up uh, and joining the team in LA because uh, I know they're, well, they're flying, th- they, they have the rookie dinner tomorrow night in LA and then they have mm-hmm. the day off Sunday in LA to recover from the rookie party. And <laughs> Monday they practice Monday morning in LA, and then they fly to Columbus where they play on Wednesday. Um, but I was sort of surprised that Armia was the guy uh, again. They decided to call up from from Laval today. Yeah, it, it, it's it's interesting, but you know what? I, I I I wish I knew what went into these what went into these decisions because uh, I, I wish I had an answer to offer up for our listeners, just as, yeah. uh, as I'm sure, yeah. as I'm sure you, you did, you do. But uh, you know, I getting back to you loading though, like I'm not call me crazy, but I don't mind him on the fourth line because he kind of, he's, he's kind of like a, Again, no slight on who the player I'm about to mention. He did a he was a great soldier here in Montreal. Um, but he reminds me a lot of an Arturi Lekanin that will hit the net more often. You know? Like Yeah, I think he's got I think he's got a a, a better skill set, just pure skills than yeah. Lekanin. Lekanin was heart and desire and winning puck battles. But they, they got the, they got the same engine though. That's the thing. Yeah, they yeah, got the same do. engine. It's, yeah, I mean even he's on the fourth line, you play him like he didn't play hardly at all today. Uh, today in the third period, and 
you know, give him that taste. And, you know, I mentioned Joshua Roy. He's, he's averaging, I don't know, a point a game in Laval. Um, I guess they don't want to rush him up, and, and but I'd still rather see him get a little taste uh, and see what he can do at the NHL level. It's funny how they don't want to rush so many guys. Like, they didn't want to rush Ryan Backer. They don't want to rush Joshua mm-hmm. Roy, but they certainly rushed Yuri Slavkovsky, you know, uh, who's starting to look yeah. better. I mean, he had a good game today. I mean, yeah, he had a good game, yeah. Field. Uh, he played 19 minutes, which is the most he's ever played in the NHL. He's coming along, um, but but again, I think you know if the, if this is the all the year you now, when when Jeff Gordon didn't want to use the P word at the golf tournament, saying about playoffs, you know it was all about development and, and uh, growth and moving forward. Uh, when I see old Army getting called up, that doesn't tell me growth and development and moving forward. That that's you know a guy that. Again, I'm a 30-year-old guy who's not part of this team's future. And the only reason he's still here is because he cleared waivers and nobody else wants him. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, just back to uh, – it's just it, – again, just to, to finish off on your point on Yoel Armia, it's just weird, you know. Like, I, I don't get it. Maybe they're trying to do right by the player. Um, or trying to maybe it's- okay some, but I mean – if nobody wanted him on waivers, uh, no. Well, that's what, well, that's what it is. You know, maybe – and it's like you can't even – how much salary can you really continue to eat? Yeah. For I, – I mean, and I mean his contract, it's it's up at the end of the year this year, right? Or no, he's next got year? one more. He's got one more. Okay, so if he's got one more, you know, how much salary can you really keep eating? Yeah. If Especially if, like, the reports are – coming out you know you want to throw some money at a big ticket acquisition this offseason like you can't just keep eating money like i don't know what it is with armia but uh they got to figure something out there because well, you mentioned lekanen before i mean mark bergeron signed the wrong finish forward no oh, yeah for, money for, that he gave yeah. i mean if he had offered the money that he gave army to lekanen lekanen would probably still be here yeah it's just yeah, he probably would be. Well, I mean, he was a great asset to to ship off because Justin Barron doesn't look too bad. But uh, no, getting but, back mean, to but Luckin, Luckin was really no. I know what you mean here. I mean, he went to Colorado. I mean, he never played the power play here. He went to Colorado. Yeah. And put him on the power play. I mean, he's a guy who wins yeah. battles. He's a guy. I mean, I used to I used to like watching games in the press box uh, at the Bell Center and watching the battles Luckin would have to get the puck out of the defensive zone, like within five to ten feet of the blue line. Like he would almost die to get the puck out of his own end. <laughs> like he would do anything and everything he possibly could. Just those little plays, just to get the puck out of your defensive zone. Yeah. And like he would he was he was he was fearless. And when you look at him in the room, he's like a little skinny guy. He's not built. He's not uh he's not a big strong guy, but he just he played so big compared to the size he had. And you've got you imagine if you put Arturi Lekin and into Yule Army his body, what a hockey player you'd have. Oh my God. Well, yeah, that's the, and that's the thing. Like I say, Arturi Lekkinen, uh, he's car. He was a soldier for this team. He also, mm-hmm. you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be forever, forever remembered in this city for that right, game against right. Vegas, yeah, the goal. Uh, you know, the, 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 the overtime goal, like forever. It's, I, I remember, you know, it's funny. I was in the building last year when Colorado came to play the Habs and it was the first, it was Lekkinen's first time coming back to Montreal he scored a goal that game, and never in my life, Stu, would I imagine Montreal fans unironically cheering for another team's yeah. player scoring. That was like yeah. one of the most amazing things I had ever seen. Like well, I was, Lekin, Lekin I was, was one of them. Lekin was loved by his teammates because of the, the way. Well, he was a good guy, quiet guy, at least mm-hmm. with the media, but just the way he worked. And hockey fans in Montreal aren't stupid. You know an honest hockey player. You know a hockey player who comes and works. Like, you know, Michael Pizzetta is an honest hockey player. He's not the most talented hockey player in the world, but he gives you everything he has every time he's on the ice. And Montreal fans appreciate that. They see that in, in, in players, and, and they really appreciate it. Lekin was one of those guys, and that's part of the reason why he would get that ovation. Plus, he scored that huge goal, as you mentioned. Yeah, so uh... – He's great. Uh, Jesse, Jesse alone. And just give me more of him, all that to say, because I, I just want to see more, you know, and uh, Yuri Slavkovsky had a great game again. Yeah. And, you know, people are getting really frustrated with him. And it's just like, again, let's remember where the Canadians are, what they're doing right now and what they're trying to accomplish. And then look no further than another 
you know, first round pick, first overall pick, I should say, deemed a bust. Uh, you know, he's four years, this is his fourth year of his NHL career. And sure, the point total isn't expected right now. He's not on pace for a hundred points, but he is on pace for just under 40 goals. And that's Alexis Lafreniere. He mm-hmm. looks fantastic this year. Yeah. So let, let's pump the brakes on Uri Slavkovsky. Let's take the wins, you know, celebrate. He had a good game. I understand it kind of sounds a little ridiculous that it's a first overall pick and we have to talk about him this way mm-hmm. um, based off of other first overall picks and especially the one that was drafted this past year. But, you know, like, let's just – everyone all, pump the brakes. He's a 19-year-old kid. And all number one overall picks are not created equal. Yeah. Well, but clearly, it, right? They just picked the wrong year to – get the number one pick, right? They didn't, it wasn't the Connor Bedard year. Um, exactly. But yeah, with, with, with Slavkovsky, I mean, the Canadians are determined that they're doing the right thing, keeping them here. And part of that is, I'm sure they just want to prove that they made the right pick when they took number mm-hmm. one. Uh, um, and Slavkovsky is starting to get more confidence. Uh, Marty St. Louis spoke yesterday uh, in San Jose after practice with the reporters there about how he'd like to see Slavkovsky use his body more. It's one of his biggest assets. And he doesn't use it enough. He doesn't finish his checks enough. Um, and, he, and he said part of that is just the way the game – he's never really been in a system where you're the F1 forward, F2, F3. Your role's different as far as on the four check. And he's thinking all this, and it's happening. Like, am I two? Am I three? And he's not able to – and I've said this from, from – the beginning, he doesn't look ready to me, or he hadn't looked ready to me to play in the NHL just because the game moves too fast for him. Not that he's not physically quick enough and can skate fast enough to keep up. His brain can't process yeah. everything that's coming so quickly, which isn't which is normal for a guy that age. It's the yeah, NHL is a hard league to play in. You have no time and space. Everything happens so quick. You got to be thinking faster than you're moving, and he's slowly maybe catching up with that. The brain's starting to catch up with. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, with the body when it comes to what you have to do or what you don't have to do. Um, so we're seeing the last four or five games, though, I've seen much more improvement than I had seen in the previous 20 games I've watched him or 25 games going back to last season because I really thought like he he should not be in the NHL. He's just not ready to play here. And he's looking more ready now. And as I said, you got 19 minutes of ice time. Marty St. Louis had him on the ice in overtime also. Uh, so St. Louis is getting more confidence in him, and uh, that's going to give Slavkovsky more confidence in himself. So uh, moving forward, uh, again, that's the, the ice time he's getting now in a situation where the pressure isn't there. You're not expected to make the playoffs for the Canadians. Hopefully will pay off and be very valuable to them in the future. Similar to well, what La Frenier. Well, that's it. And, you know, the just the biggest key right now, I think, is because, you know, some players could get by in pure talent on their own. Like like you said, not all first overall picks are created mm-hmm. equal. I don't think it really matters who Connor Bedard's coach is. No. I think he'll be fine no matter yeah. what. Other players need coaching. And I think yeah. what's important right now, what the biggest prior, biggest thing on Martin St. Louis' plate is probably – other than, you know, on, at a player level, forget the uh, undisciplined yeah. and all that stuff, managing three goalies, all that. It's on a player to player basis. It's how do I keep getting consistent, good performances out of Uri Slavkovsky out like tonight or yeah. today, I should say. Yeah. Like, I don't want the, the last thing you want is for him to become another Yoel Armia where, you know, you show up. Once every 15 games, 10 games, you know, you'll get your points. And then everyone hangs on to that hope of what you can be because we see flashes of it. And then you disappear because it's like you said, I haven't seen much this season except for the past few games. But that first game of the season against Toronto when he was playing with Kirby Doc, I was excited after that game. Like I said, this is why this guy is a first overall pick. We just need Martin St. Louis just needs to figure out how to get more performances like this out of him on a more consistent basis. Yeah, I don't like I really question your army his work ethic and and you know his sort of give a crap meter. Um mm. I don't with Slavkovsky. Like he, he he's he's a really good kid to be around. Like I like him a yeah. lot as a kid. He's, he's he's funny, he's confident, he's got a little bit of cockiness to him, all which are good things. His teammates like him, he's funny. Um 
and he wants to he really wants to do well like he's coachable marty st louis talks about that yeah. all the time he's a coachable kid he's just it's so much happening to him at 19 years old and a, you know, a new country a smaller rink uh new everything new language you know yeah. it's everything's coming at him at 19 years old but he like he wants to do well he wants to work he wants to he's just trying to figure it out and um you know as Marty saying we talked yesterday but he'd like to see him use his body more i think he he's never really had to because he's just been so much bigger than everybody and he probably doesn't even realize just how strong he is you see times he'll fall down and and it's just i think he's just not ready to get hit because nobody ever probably hit him when he was a kid because he was too big um so i think yeah. it's all like he wants to get better and he works a lot with adam nicholas we'll see him before practices sometimes and uh the director of hockey development and Nicholas has talked about how he he wants to learn and he wants to get better. So I, I don't worry about, like, I don't think Slavkowski is the kind of guy who's going to disappear for games because he's not trying yeah, you know, or not giving an effort. I think, I think that's going to be there. I think he wants to, he wants to be really good. He's a little bit cocky. He wants to show people. Yeah. I should have been the number one overall pick. I was the best player in the draft that year, but there's a lot coming at him and coming at him quick. Um, and he's starting now the last few games, as I said, we're starting to really see, like really see visible progress and him getting better. Uh, mm. and for his sake and for the Canadians, hopefully he can keep it, keep it moving forward. He's got, I think four points now in his last five games. Uh, that'll give him some confidence. Uh, if he can score a couple more goals, I was at it comes, but I mean, the pass he made to, uh, Caulfield for that goal today was a beautiful pass. And uh, if he can start using his body more on the forecheck in that, it's only going to create more scoring chances for him and his line mates. But I'm actually looking for the first time since I've had Sarkozy, I'm really looking forward now to the next five, 10 games to see how many more, how much more progress he can make. Cause I think we're, he's at a point now where he might be ready to uh, start really showing more why he was the number one pick. I hope so. Because, you know, it, it's like you said, all those things that you mentioned, he's in, easy kid to root for because like you just see his personality yeah. and how could you not as a as a fan of hockey you someone you know you want the nhl to you want these players to show more personality and then when they finally do it you can't just be like ah who does this guy think he is you know like you got to relish that, and he he's an easy kid to root for, in my eyes, for that reason. Yeah, yeah. I was in the locker room, and he changed – well, I noticed he changed his tape job on his stick again today back to a – but he had gone back to that crazy tape job. He was just on the toe of his stick mm. when he scored his first goal, and I was talking with him after practice uh, before they went away, and I was saying, you know, if you maybe suggested to Josh Anderson that he tries your tape job, I might give him a little luck, and he laughed. He's like, hey, I got one goal, man. I'm not giving advice to anybody on how uh, – <laughs> So, so as I said, he's got a good. He's a fun kid to be around. He really is. He, he, he's a lot of fun. You can see why his teammates like him, and uh, the package is there. I mean, the, he's he's got all the gifts, right? He's got the, the mm. size, and uh, uh, you can see the physical attributes about why the Canadians made him the number one pick. Now it's just a part of getting the brain to compute quickly enough that he can use all his attributes at the NHL level. You know, and uh, we'll see. And we'll I'm see saying the same thing. I'm not saying he's not a smart kid. I've, well, that's it. It's just everything's coming at you so quick, and you're trying to process everything. You're like, well, what's going on? You know, it, it, it happens a lot. Like we yeah. see it a lot in the NFL, where you know the a quarterback can have as much arm talent as you want, but it's just they can't process the speed that things are moving. And it's well, that's why it's so rare. It's so rare. You so rare. You or so often you see. Uh, a number one, a first round draft pick quarterback in the NFL, not even play the first season, right? They sit on the side. Well, that's right. Try and figure out, get some kind of a feel for how quick everything's happening. And with the listening to the plays coming in your helmet and everything else, and just taking in all that you need to be able to take in in order to be an effective NFL quarterback, because everything comes at you so fast. That's it. So we'll see. I mean, like, listen, Slavkovsky, he's looked good. Let's see. Hopefully for him and for the Canadians, he continues to because, uh, there's a lot of promise there. Like you, you can't look at the guy and just be like, I don't see it. Like you mm -hmm. see his frame, the, like you see his shot, the way he skates sometimes, like it's there, there, there is something there. He's just a little more raw than, uh, mm -hmm. than other first round picks. And not, Anyways, every other, uh, not every other first overall pick 
came from the larger European rink. You have to adjust and, uh, That's right. I mean, I, and a, a smaller rink, everything happens quicker. You have less time to think. And that, that's an, that's and a uh, COVID yeah. year where, like, he yeah. was drafted in that's the middle right. of COVID, where you know the, he lost him. He lost a lot of ice time in the, because mm -hmm. due to that. So tomorrow, the Canadians uh, they got another afternoon game at four o'clock against the LA Kings. Twelve, uh, the twelve three and three LA Kings. Yeah. Uh, that's another out. measuring stick game. Yeah. yeah, another 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 me measuring stick game mm -hmm. for the Canadians. I'm excited for it. Uh, it should be a good one. So uh, it's gonna be tough. Three three games in four days through the California. Tomorrow's tomorrow's gonna be a tough one for the Canadians. Like you, you, it, it's you. That's one where it's like Martez Saint Louis must know that it's like this is when he looks at the season as a whole on his big wall in his office. He'll see this game and be like, this is going to be uh, – I got to mentally prepare myself to mentally prepare these guys because this has the potential to be a real stinker. Just like yeah. last game of the road trip, they got the rookie dinner at night. Everyone just wants to party and then get it, get the hell out of here. Like I got to hunker down here and dial in. And it's a weird California trip too. There's the two afternoon games for starters. And plus normally they play – LA and Anaheim back to back because it's like a 45 minute drive yeah. or whatever. Whereas San Jose is a, a, a short flight. So it's, 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 yeah, sort of exactly. weird. It's, it's sort of weird. They played Anaheim, then they went to San Jose and then they go back to LA. It, it's a really weird, the way this California trip was set up. Listen, I'm not, uh, the, we get into a lot of things that the NHL does weird. This is well, one of the least. To it. it probably has to do with building availability. I mean, yeah, I exactly. Know, we're playing today or, or whatever. That's usually what it comes down to. But it is sort of strange that, uh, uh, you know, when you're playing LA and Anaheim back to back, it's like you basically you could stay at the same hotel. You don't even, you know. That's right. Anyways, Stu, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the hockey tomorrow and enjoy your weekend. I will. You too. That was Stu Cowan. Now it's time for Six Sports Cards. Six Sports Cards. Presented by Sports La Tornade. There he is. Six sports cards is presented by Sports La Tornade. Sports cards, collectibles, and more. Visit the store at 1 Avenue de la Fabrique in Vaudreuil, Dorian. Tornado Chris, how we doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. <laughs> I'm doing okay. Long week at work. Burrow got injured last year, uh, last week. I, it's a lot of things happening. Uh, anyways, it's the weekend. So it is. It is. How bad is, can, we, the, how bad the can we really be doing? Exactly. Uh, how about yeah. yourself? Well, it's been a busy week. Uh, the last two weekends, I've been at a uh, minor hockey uh, tournament uh, in the arena in Valleyfield. Um, lots of teams going through, lots of parents. Uh, it's good for the store. It's great pu publicity for us. So, uh, yeah, there's just a lot going on uh, as far as uh, minor hockey tournaments because those, once they start, they seem to be every weekend. So, and we try to get we try to get in on a lot of those. Um, so, yeah, that's that's something that's uh, that's definitely uh, keeping me busy for now. So, tell me. What's uh what's 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 new out there in the hockey world uh, in terms of cards? Because I know SPA uh, Spa or SP Authentic, right? That's right. right S there? SP Authentic, they, yeah. They came out with a new series. Uh, they're they're playing catch. They're one of the ones playing catch up on yep. uh, uh because of COVID. So yep. they came out with a series. Uh, what else is coming out? So uh, since last time we spoke, we've had the mm -hmm. Team Team Canada World Juniors come out with the set, and we've also had the um, Stature, which uh, I have here, which uh, we're going to open a box of Stature later. Mm -hmm. um, that came out, uh, today's Friday, Wednesday. So Stature came out on Wednesday. We've had the World Juniors, and we've had, uh, there was a big, there was quite a, big release in baseball was the uh, top tops update series. So now, uh, ever since tops, uh, has been purchased by fanatics. Uh, I don't know if you saw this past before, but, uh, fanatics made these game debut patches, which they, so they, 
they were sewn on all the rookies jerseys this year. So anybody mm. who played their first MLB uh, season game would ha- get one of these, these debut patches and these debut patches were then cut out of the jerseys and put into cards huh. as one of ones. So there's some Those pretty are- big one of ones out there to be had in the tops update series. All right. That's a, the, yeah, that sounds like a, it sounds like one that it's like if you pull one of those, if you're a baseball card collector, you pull one of those, you are uh, getting noise complaints at this hour if by you, your neighbors. Uh, yeah, if you're if you're following anybody, uh, Instagram, TikTok, and all these uh, these card breakers on on any platform uh, in the United States, they're they're definitely opening some tops update right now. All right, um, so. Stature, before we get into that, um, I just want to ask you about the product first. Uh, right. Because it seems to me like that's a pretty popular one, uh, you know, from years past. Like I'm seeing a lot of breakers. Uh, a lot of people like to open Stature. Uh, why is that? Um, stature has a different look to it. They, 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 I see a lot of older uh vets signing in this product they go and get a little bit like uh today we did a box break for our store and we pulled actually a a really nice larry robinson autograph which you don't see some you don't see those very often um you have a lot of i want to say pretty much every autograph is a hard signed I, i didn't see any stickers yet i might Every now and then you'll 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 see a sticker and ask why why a sticker but there's always a reason for it but um, these are mostly hard signs so on the card um, so stature is like it's pretty affordable it's it's one of the medium tier uh, products and yeah it's 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 actually always kept up to to the hype so. Again, this year uh, it came in and we sold quite a few right off the bat. Yeah, that's it. I see. I just see a lot of uh, breakers <clears throat> on TikTok. Like always, uh, <clears throat> before that, you know, before the green one is this <clears throat> latest. The green box is the latest one, but I think last the last box to come out was purple. That's and right. I, like nonstop opening the purple boxes when <clears throat> I I see the ones that I know, like the big ticket ones, like Premier Black Diamond yeah. that we opened on this show before, uh, and and other ones. They're they're sitting there, and people just love stature. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's when you do box breaks and you have, if you want to do like a mixer where you put in three or four or five different products, you Mm. you just throw in a stature in there. Everyone's happy and you get, you get your money's worth usually. So it's a good product to throw in a break. Um, I do know people that do collect that. They, they wait for stature to come out. There's not, there's not that many, not, not like everyone's waiting, you know, for series one or two for se, yeah. but, but there is their stature collectors out there and, and in, like in breaks, it's, it's really good. So, so. let's, uh, let, let's talk about before we get to the box opening, one last thing, I, I, I'm very excited for the box <clears throat> opening. Um, it's, uh, let's, let's talk selling tips because, you know, a lot of people, they love to collect other people. They like to see it as an investment. So let, tell me about uh, like some of the top selling tips for maybe some of the newbies out there. Yeah. So selling tips, um, I, I everyone is, is referring to eBay these days, you know, where we used to refer to the Beckett. So now everyone's looking at eBay, which is, which is good. It's, it's what you have to do if you're going to sell. You want to do your homework and look at eBay to see what the market is like. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about selling tips tonight is because there has been a little bit of um, a thing going on on eBay where people are trying to boost the comparisons of a card that they might have or uh, they think is not worth, it's worth more than it's selling on eBay. So they want to boost it up a bit. So they'll, they'll bid on a card and even win the card in an auction, but then if you really dig into the report of that card, it's not paid for. And the transaction is eventually canceled. But when it comes to comparisons, it's shown as a sold card. So when you're looking at, say, it doesn't matter what, a a Cole Caulfield Young Guns rookie card, 
Sure. You type you type it in on eBay. You go down on the top right hand side the menu and you you bring the bar down. You go to sold items because a lot of people a lot of people don't even do that. A lot of people just look and say, "Oh my god, like it's selling for two hundred dollars." But right. no, but no, a Cole Caulfield Young Guns is not selling for two hundred dollars. It's selling anywhere between a hundred and one twenty five between a hundred and a hundred and twenty five. Now you got to be sure to go into the sold items and and look at which ones actually sold, and then out of the blue, sometimes you'll see, oh, Cole Caulfield sold for one hundred and fifty. Why is that? And then you look, and then you really look into it, click on it, and look into it. Oh, the buyer didn't pay. I wonder what happened there. And then, but it's a comparison. People won't look at that. They'll just be like, "Oh, I can sell mine for one fifty because look, there's a comparison that sold for e- for one fifty on eBay." So you have to be you have to be careful with. There's little tricks that you know can fool the actual platform itself, like eBay. Yeah, it's just it's it's really just a matter of <clears throat> do you really just if you want to sell. And you want to do make a you know make a living off this or just you know make a little bit of money? You really got to do your homework. You got to just know your stuff. It's like any field. That's really. right. And um, the you know unfortunately the 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 economy right now where the economy is, we're seeing a lot of people that have to sell. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is is too bad because I'm I'm telling everybody to hold. Yeah. Uh, if you can hold right now, do not sell because you're not going to get what you paid for it. And your, your, your cards, unless it's like very few, like Jack Hughes, maybe Jack Hughes is one of the very few that I've seen this year actually go up. Everything else has gone down. So even based on performance, the economy is just, if, if you, if you can buy right now, it's a good time to buy or hold um to sell you can sell but just 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 be careful because know that what where the economy is at and know what your offer is coming to you because it's going to be low like you're going to get low ball offers and it's it's part of the game it's 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 kind of it's just a wave that we're in it'll come back when the bedard start coming out and and the economy gets better and you know we we've seen it before and it'll happen again so it's all right yeah it's nothing new all right uh, let's so, get to the action let's get to the yeah, main you event start with the stature. i'm i'm very excited <laughs> okay so we'll open this uh, so stature here is um this is a 22 23 so uh oh by the way i uh i forgot to mention in what's new um i wanted to mention december uh, I mean, don't quote me on the exact date. Uh, December 16th mm. is, is going to be uh, everybody's favorite, the cup. Uh-huh. So they... I won't uh, I, I listen, if you want to surprise if you want to surprise me one Friday night and say we're, you know, I'm not even asking for the pack. I just you want to open it on the show, you let me know. I'm, gonna... I, I'm in for that. I'm going to open the cup. Uh, yeah, we could do it live on the show. That would probably be a good idea. Um, Hell yeah. So it's the 21-22 with Caulfield and Zegris. So as you can see, stature, much like a black diamond, it's one pack. And it says mm-hmm. here uh, eight eight premium uh, hockey cards. So we have eight eight cards in here. Um, yeah, for the uh, the cup, I'm, uh, I'm anxious to see. It's going to be big December 16th. Uh, but I, I, I just don't understand upper deck sometimes Hmm. like December 16th, right before Christmas. Yeah. Like (laughs) did they, uh, now like, you know, my wife might not get a Christmas present now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, Hey, maybe or, or, or. You hit one of those Caulfield or Zegrises, she might be getting a very nice Christmas present. She game. might be getting a very nice Christmas present. That's right. So, as usual, we're going to start from the top and the bottom. So, the, yep. they're, they're usually our, uh, our base cards. So, we got a pretty good base card to start. It's a, it's a Kirill Kaprasov. 
nice looking yeah. cards. You know, you see it's a, I find they have like a little bit older look to them, but it's uh yeah. So this is a, is this a sideways like a, card? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a parallel. So. All right. Islanders, a little Pat LaFontaine. A little Pat LaFontaine. Like I said, a little bit of older names, right? In this product. Yeah. So, so as you can see, if I go back on the top, well, can't go wrong with Wayne. He's pretty good. He, you know, he's, he's proven, he's proven to be all right. De decent hockey player, I would say. Yeah. So it's not numbered. Well, it would have been nice if we would have had a numbered Gretzky, but uh, it seems to be just his base card again. So, but uh, now we're going to get into some rookies, and it looks like we yeah. uh, we hit we we hit a good rookie. If we're going to hit a rookie in in stature, we have Matt. Oh Brady. yeah. So yeah. I believe uh, I believe he's going to be uh, very good. So uh, Matt yeah. Boldy, Matt Boldy, rookie numbered to uh, three ninety nine. Three ninety nine, so ra rare enough, you know. There's there's probably yeah. uh there's probably rookies that are numbered to ninety nine. I'm thinking, but uh, oh, sure. I've seen a couple of those being opened, and hey, that's still a nice card. That's yeah. a, you know, where that's a that's a beautiful card. Yeah, Boldy's gonna be good. Um, another three ninety nine, but not the big name, but Zach yeah. Hayes for the Vegas Golden Knights. I mean. Also numbered to three nine nine, but I, I I feel I like my boldy much better. Yeah, um, I would so. I would say that would be wise. Yeah, to, yeah, uh, yeah, to hold on to the boldy if you could only hold on to one of them. Yeah, can't go wrong with our next one, numbered to seventy five. Oh, so that's a nice card. Some people that's would beautiful card. You know, some people would argue he was the uh, the uh, the goat of of goalies. You probably would, you know. Probably wouldn't get much of that in Montreal here, but yeah, uh, that's uh, that was number nice, nice number card. So that here's yeah. the thing about uh, stature I always notice, um, or and really just uh, also in S in SPA noticed it a little bit. Different colors of of cards, right? Is that based off of the numbered? Yeah. Or is that okay? That's based yeah. off of how numbered it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this color, uh, all the all this color, like any card that's numbered to seventy five, will be this color. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they call that a red or a maroon or like a. Okay. So here we have a low numbered. Oh, this is seventy five. Also, he also wasn't too bad. Looks like we're getting a lot of goalies tonight. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, this is not a bad box. No, I like it, Grant Fuhrer. <laughs> I mean, with the with with the Maple Leafs too, hmm. Grant Fuhrer with the Maple Leafs. I, I know I don't. I that's another thing is that uh, prices of cards can vary, like mm. Grant Fuhrer with the Maple Leafs versus Grant Fuhrer with the Oilers, right? So right, that's you just that's, got, and you also just you got to get maybe if you're looking to sell that card, you got to get lucky and hope that someone's collecting Grant Fuhrer or he's a big Leafs fan of the yeah. 70s or 80s, you know? Yeah, that's, yeah. So here's our best rookie. See, we do have rookies. Uh, this one is to number to 33. Nick Blankenberg. Right. Uh, uh, potential. I want to say he has potential. Yeah, um, you'd, he's, you'd like to see him on a bigger team than Columbus. That's right, that's what, and yeah, it's he's not a nobody, but right. Yeah. So we got one more card, and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, he's not playing very well. But he's 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 he's, he's, he's a good player. He's a, but hey, know. that's a that's a Florida Panthers Jonathan Huberto though. That that is so. that's what that's back in his heyday. Exactly. That's not the Calgary Flames, Jonathan Huberto. So that's still a no. nice card. I like that card. It's a beautiful yeah. card. Is it, so is that a hard signature or is that a That signature? is. That is. Nope, that's a there hard signature. Go. Yep. So then that one's numbered to 50. All right. So listen, uh, 50, Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan Huberto, with the way he's played on the Flames, that's probably tanked his price a lot. But hey, he did really well on the Florida Panthers. If you got a Florida Panthers collector out there. You know that's where to it. find Chris. <laughs> you know where to find Tornado Chris. That's right. That's right. So yeah, that because last time we opened a box, uh, we we pulled out a big. It was a Barkov too, right? We had a Barkov yes, and that's now right. a Huberto. So now we're 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 Florida Panthers heavy now. Yeah, we're but see, and that's the thing is that I remember last time we opened the box, um, 
we weren't too thrilled. Right. This one, I would say, is a pretty good box. Yeah. It's a pretty good box. Yeah. We we, we should try, uh, maybe next time I'll try uh, the Team Canada one because in the Team Canada, there's Bedard. And um, mm. what people, you know what? I This is really weird as I've been to a few shows now and I've been to like these arenas where there's, you know, a lot of people talking about Bedard and the next upcoming yeah. thing. And, 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 and I had in my showcase, I had this really nice uh, Macklin Celebrini card. Right. Nobody said a word about it. Nobody even noticed it. And I, and, and I just, I had to tell people like, you guys might want to look out for this one. And they're like, Oh really? Yeah. It's, but that'll come. That'll come when the TSN and the whatever the, you know, the, the forecast of the, the yeah draft comes out and you'll, you'll hear more about them but and hey that would be a that'd be a great uh holiday time thing to do because the world juniors takes place during the holidays so okay so we're gonna save it for that that's that's a true there you uh, go yeah Perfect. so we'll do that and that's great and again another great box uh great tips uh from tornado chris again let's bring up the promo uh or not the promo but the uh the little the little uh, graphic we have for his store. So six sports cards is brought to you by sports, Let uh, sports cards, collectibles, and more visit the store at one Avenue de la Fabrique in Vaudreuil Dorian. Again, listen, we say this all the time. Whenever you're on, you could buy your cards online. There's really nothing like going into a card shop. It's the nope. best. It is the best. We, we, we we're, we're refreshing all the time. We got new stuff. Uh, so yeah, come and come in, check us out. And uh, this Sunday, we're locked in on the Titans, eh? We're yeah, oh, big time, yeah. I, and you know what? I'm Funny you say that. I'm going in with you because, again, like I told you, in my, in my fantasy football league, we do Survivor to determine our draft order. Even and though, even I though, the Titans. even though I called the Titans biggest fan and he was like, you know, he wasn't sure, we'll but... We could still blame it on him anyways. It doesn't matter. Okay. That's, okay. that's just the easy thing. You just text I mean, him out of anger. Like, what the hell's going on with your team? They suck. And he's going to yeah, be like, yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. know. Well, like, I'm like, they can't shoot. Yeah. You know? I've, I've been this far, week 12, and now you blew it. No. Well, we'll but here's the other thing. You know, when you get to Survivor, and it's like, in in my Survivor pool, you know, it's not that intense because it's for a draft order, right? Um, So we get two chances. I got both my chances. And like, Remember last week, I took a chance on some team. I forget which team. It was a bad team, bad football team. And like my friends who are out, by the way, they are out of the survivor. They're like, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're doing. You're, you don't know what's going on. You don't know anything. And I'm just like, I'm like, it's week 11. Like, I don't have good teams to just throw out there anymore. Like, I got to take chances. That's how it happens in survivor. We're taking a chance this week. I, I do I do have to ask you something though about Survivor. I don't know if you know, is it like this in all Survivors where the Thursday games never count? Like they, you're never you can never take the Thursday games. Is there a reason for that? So I've heard. You know, it's funny. I've heard. I've heard of. Uh, I've heard of that actually not too long ago. I actually just heard of that because um, my my aunt does a, a confidence pool and like for some reason just the thursday games didn't count or you know so i don't know it's I, uh it's it's really weird it's i don't know why that is it depends on the platform i guess because i i was going niners all uh, yesterday all day oh yeah Phew, come on i i couldn't i couldn't uh couldn't do it and i and, and i i was hoping i was hoping that a lot of people would have would have taken uh the lions which got you know that would have put out more people but Oh yeah, but hey, listen. Uh, they got they the Lions got to clean things up, but if they keep playing the way that they are, like turning the ball over, yeah. and like listen, I don't know about you, Chris. I listen. I love me a good fake punt. I do. Yeah, but, but. you don't run one every week. No, you, you eh? can't. You run it like twice a season max. And uh, Go- Goff has got to. Get some sticky. I don't, I don't oh, know. It's, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm All saying. Right. They're turning the ball over way too much. Anyways. Oh, yeah. Tornado Chris, Good. this is going to be the only time you're going to hear me say this. And you, as a Colts fan, should be the only time you say this. But go, Titans. Go, Titans.
<laughs> All right. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah, you too. Have a good one. That was Tornado Chris. My name's Matt O'Han. You're listening to the Sick Podcast. We'll catch you next time. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination.